Hello, church. I am not Pastor Brett. However, I delivered something to his house and could not get away without saying, welcome to worship. Happy Mother's Day. Are you guys sure you've got this? Yeah, the twins are plugged in, baby's asleep. How hard can this get? We're men. Besides, I bumped into Chuck Norris at a Pizza Hut once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on, enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, this weekend was a bad idea. You remember what happened last time we watched the kids? I'm not a pinata. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need help. Warning, use of this product may alter your perception of reality. <sighs> All right, everything looks the same. This is a joke. Guys, guys. Guys, it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody hit me with some juice? <laughs> and listen, pulp, no pulp, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the ones dealing with the diaper. Mom goggles. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Sweetie, I need you to sit on your bottom. Listen to Daddy. You sit on your bottom, okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Don't, don't move. Don't, 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 don't dance. Just sit on your bottom. Daddy's gonna come get you. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't you try to stop me. Baby made a poopy, yes you did, bitch. Where are your mom goggles? They wouldn't fit over my hazmat suit. Take this. Oh, oh. You're so cute, bitch. And then the little boy <laughs> rocked his mommy. Oh, I love you. Forever. I like you too. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Oh, well you take it and you fold it from corner to corner. No, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do moms do all of this? How do they handle it all? Well, maybe they have goggles we don't know about. It's as if God gave moms a special way of looking at things, you know? Okay, who taught you servanthood? Who modeled grace? Who gave you a taste of what God's love could look like? My mom, Mr. T, and my mom. Anyway, I, I just think God gave moms a special way of looking at things. Hey, honey. Hey, how's it going at home? It's all good. Guess you could say I'm starting to catch a glimpse of what your world looks like. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 
Mama. Hold on, your daughter wants to say something to you. She says she misses you. And she realizes how important you are in her life. And she doesn't know how you do it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. She said all that, huh? I don't know if she said it. But it's what I wanted to say. And I should have said it a lot sooner. I thank God for you. The twins. Um, it, it was nothing. Um, we, we have to go, okay? Um, lo love you, Mommy. Hello guys, my name is Jeremiah Brown, singer, piano player, international singer. I'm here to sing a song. I'm going to de dedicate this song to uh, all family, friends, people in the world who have lost um, a family member or a loved one due to COVID-19. <laughs>
Thank you. Good morning, church. It's Barb Westwater. I'll be doing the reading. It's from the first book of Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear for what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through the water. And baptism, which is the prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who was gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Once upon a time, I won a decent amount of money on a slot machine at a casino in Australia while visiting my sister when she was studying abroad. True story. And I took that little ticket uh, printout to the cashiers uh, right up to the window and she handed me this this big old wad of cash and as I was uh, walking away counting it I realized that she gave me too much she had accidentally given me an extra hundred dollar bill and um, to the frustration of uh, my sister's then boyfriend at the time um, I walked back to the window and gave it back I didn't do it because uh, I think the casino would have missed the hundred dollars no in fact I could care less and not because um, it would have shorted the cashier's drawer um, though I think that's a good enough reason alone, um, she probably would have gotten in trouble. I did it because keeping the money would have been wrong. I didn't find the $100 on the street. I knew whose money it was. It's just keeping it would have been wrong. I say this only to mention the truth here. I was really tempted to take the money. I hate casinos. I think they're morally bankrupt. As I tell you this story about me winning money gambling in a casino. And truth be told, if I woke up on the other side of the bed or I ate something different for dinner that night, I might have just kept it. It just happened to be a good day for me morally. But I think as people of faith, we're called to do the right thing. Not some of the time, not most of the time, all of the time. Not just for big decisions and big things, and, but little decisions and little things. I think that our love of Jesus compels us to rise above. But here's the thing, I'm not, I'm not ignorant of the reality. I know the truth about our capabilities. Of course, sin prevents us from being our best. On our own, we are incapable of doing good, of being right. 
the type of good and right that God wants us to be anyways. That's why God gave us Jesus. Not only to model a life worth living, but to offer us forgiveness of our sins. To bring us grace into our lives. We need it. So that we don't have to be perfectly good and perfectly right. It's not what God calls us to do. But once we're forgiven of our sins, once we're free from the burden of having to be perfect, what now? How will we choose to live our lives? What now? Well, let me show you something. This is my workroom, and it's kind of messy. It's got lots of tools for tons of unfinished projects that I've got going around here, and they're all great. Look at them all. Look, here's, here's a fun one. This is called a, uh, I don't know, what is it? It's a hammer axe. It's great, because you can, you know, hammer and axe all at the same time, and here's one. It's a little wrench, and there's a little screwdriver up there, and here's a, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a bendy straw thing. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is they're all different, all these tools, and some of them are more closely related than others, but they all serve a purpose for me. And St. Paul says in Ephesians 2.10 that, we are God's handiwork created in Christ to do good. Now think about that for a second. We're kind of like God's tools. We're certainly all very different. Some of us are a little harder than others. <laughs> We've got different political ideologies, cultural upbringings. Some of us have even maybe traumatic experiences that shape part of who we are. We're differently educated, uniquely made, and all of us wonderfully crafted. But all of us, all of us have been created with purpose to do good. We've been forgiven of all the ways that we fall short. We've been freed by Christ of that guilt and shame so that we can go and do God's work, so that we can love our neighbor and love our Lord, so that we can be God's hands and feet in the world. St. Peter writes in this letter that Barb read today, Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? That... Even if you suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. What Peter writes is a call to living a moral life, even if it sometimes requires self-sacrifice. And Jesus offers his own life as that model. There is this phrase that I'm sure you've, you've heard, what would Jesus do, WWJD? A few Christians I know don't like that phrase because it sets an impossible standard. Because we can't do what Jesus does. And because they feel like it maybe confuses us with the person of Christ. And I get it. Um, but I don't actually agree with those Christians. Christians have been striving to live like Christ for 2,000 years. He's the model of human living. And I don't think we should stop striving. And I know that when we do good, it's not the kind of perfect good that Jesus does. I know that. Look, when I gave that, that money back, it's because I think that Jesus would have given that money back. But I know, actually, that Jesus wouldn't have been in that casino in the first place. So I beg for mercy. I receive his forgiveness. And I do as much good as I can tomorrow. We are God's handiwork created in Christ to do good. And we're not always going to get it right. I mean, listen, if tools could talk, these ones would tell you I make a ton of mistakes. A ton. Because I'm kind of an idiot with these things. Ask anyone. But it doesn't mean we don't try. I, I want people, when they look at my life, without knowing my profession or without seeing this 
this cross around my neck to think, hey, I bet that guy's a Christian because I'm actually trying to model a Christian life. Not because I'm getting it right all the time, not because there aren't moments of hypocrisy or a lifetime's worth of shortcomings. There are. But because I am striving to do what is right in the name of Jesus, always. Loving big, living generously, failing but accepting forgiveness. And so church, I pray when it comes to doing right, to doing the right things, to doing good, you get lots of practice. Amen. Keep the lights on, support the backpack program, donate when needed to the local social service organizations, to mention a few. When we keep up with our pledge, we can continue to move forward. Even though we are in unprecedented waters with the pandemic, and we can't be together as we would like, we are looking forward to brighter days ahead and being back at Trinity to worship together soon. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. God bless you. for the Maronis. On this Mother's Day, we're thankful for mothers, grandmothers, and all those who give motherly care. Promote tired parents to use words of encouragement and kindness as they guide our children through new learning. Prayer for the teachers, parents, and students as they all learn in different ways. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the free spell. Thank you for us to go outside. Amen. We are excited to share the Shoreline Soup Kitchen will reopen its first site at Trinity. In response to COVID-19 prevention, safety practices will be in place to include all meal prep, baking, and cooking will be done on site at Trinity. All meals will be packaged for curbside pickup in accordance with social distancing. While we do not have a definitive start date, we are hopeful for May 15th. We are welcoming new volunteers and accepting contributions through financial and supply donations. Hey church, it's great to worship with you today. And now as always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. No, go, go.
Go. Go do good. Oh, I'm saying goodbye to church. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye, church. Say bye, church. Bye-bye, church. Now tell them to go do good. Do. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>